What's the first thing we want to look at? That's right, RTQ, for those of you that are here for the first time, RTQ stands for read the question. We absolutely want to read the question first, not the whole thing, like two plays, no. We want to go ahead and start with the question sentence. So right here. At this rate, how long would it take for the planes to be 961.5 kilometers apart? So everyone, short phrase, what is it that we're looking for in that red highlight? What are they asking us to find? We know what topic we're doing today, but what is it that we're trying to find? Rixa says time, 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 time. Oh, not kilometers, not quite kilometers. We're looking for time. Notice that it says, hey, look, at this rate, how long would it take? How long would it take? And if you take a look at the answer choices, well, those are all times. So I hope you understand that we are looking for time. Again, even if you have no clue, no clue what you're doing, even if you had no clue, I'm sure you could pick apart that question sentence understand what you're looking for so again that's the first goal now goal number two goal number two is going to be well hey let's read through the information and let's pick this apart so here we go here we go we see that it says hey we have two planes begin from the same position and travel in the same direction plane a and plane b travel at this many kilometers per hour and that many kilometers per hour respectively Notice that I did not, I did not read those numbers. They're not that important. The context around them, absolutely important, way more important than what the numbers actually are. So let's understand this. Everyone, 915 kilometers per hour. Let's read that again. Kilometers per hour. What kind of a unit is that? Kilometers per hour. What does that represent everybody? What does that represent? Kilometers per hour. Kilometers by itself is a distance. Hours by itself is time. Kilometers per hour, though, is what? Yeah, kilometers per hour is a rate. We have to make sure we understand this and understand it clearly. So here, 915 kilometers per hour. That's plane A. That is a rate. So plane one's rate, 915 kilometers per hour. Again, the word per is what really gives it away. Now, if we take a look at plane B, plane B says, hey, right over here. Well, what we have over here, plane B, travels 1,556 kilometers per hour. My party people, what's different about this question so far versus the previous one? What's different about this one compared to the previous? Yeah, we have two rates. We have two rates. Okay, my party people. So, does anybody know what we should be doing with these two rates? What should we be doing? Some people are saying add the rates, subtract the rates. We could add them, we could multiply them. I mean, we could do whatever we wanted. Is that going to get us the correct answer, though? I just want to know what your best guess is. Chris, put them together in what way? Subtract Delilah. I would add, says Jennifer. I love this. It's like a game show. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right? So, okay. So, let's understand where we're going to go from here in just a moment because we're not done writing the information down. We have one more piece of information, and that's right over here. So, how long would it take for the planes to be 961.5 kilometers apart? My party people, that 961.5, what does that represent? What does that represent? Yeah, that represents distance, represents the distance. So we have our distance right here. And I'll just write that down. 
Okay, now let me help you understand this. We have two rates here. What are we supposed to do? Well, here's the main piece of information that you should be highlighting. It's this. Notice how this isn't highlighted. Two planes begin from the same position and travel in the same direction. So what does that mean? Well, here's what it means, my party people. If we're trying to see how far apart they're going to be, well, let me go ahead and show you this illustration up here. Let's go ahead and suppose that we have two planes. We have plane one. Again, going this speed in that direction. And then we have plane two going same direction in this speed. So everyone, let's go ahead and say that the first plane, well, let's say that it goes a distance of seven miles. I know we're talking about kilometers in this particular question, but let's just go ahead and say, uh, let me go ahead and lower this actually. There we go, perfect. So let me lower that there. And that first plane again is going, let's say seven miles an hour. Let's just use a random number that's easy to understand. If we pick another random number, let's go ahead and say, five for the second one well if we're trying to understand hey if this plane goes seven miles in that direction this plane goes five miles in that same direction everyone how far apart are these two planes in this example someone just said two another person follows and says two another two another two and now the chat box is being flooded with twos. Okay, now I didn't explain a darn thing, but it sounds like this started making some sense to some people out there. Well, take a look here, take a look. What ends up happening is this. If we're trying to see how far apart they are, well, we're not gonna count the distance that they both covered because they're going in the same direction. And so what that comes out to look like is this we will basically ignore all of this that they've already traveled. We will ignore all of this. We only care about this. And that was the two, the difference of two. The first five, they both covered. It's that first plane that goes the extra two. So when we're going in the same direction, we will subtract those rates. So let me go ahead and make this a little more clear. So only when, let me write this very clearly, only when you have, again, two objects at the same time from the same place. So only when you have two objects from same position, from the same position, here's the rule. When you have two objects from the same position, if they are going, let me make this a little smaller here. If we're going in the same direction, we subtract rates. Subtract the rates, subtract the distance, it means the same thing, but we will subtract those rates. If we have opposite directions, if we're going apart, well, if we take one step this way and two steps this way, that's a total of three. You wouldn't subtract there because this person and this person, they're covering new ground independent of each other. If we're going in the same direction, we're covering the same distance and we gotta make sure we don't count that. That's why we cancel or subtract. But if we're going in opposite directions, me taking a step this way is not the same step as you this way. It's not. And so if we're going opposite directions, we add those rates and distances. If we're going in the same direction, we will subtract those rates and distances. My party people, does that make sense? Let me know. If we're going in the same direction, we subtract. If we're going in opposite directions, we will add. So that's really what you wanna have written down. right there and so opposite direction we add the rates and distances together now for those of you who remember the question regarding and let me go ahead and just keep this zoomed in for a moment so you can take those notes okay only when two objects are from the same position go ahead take the time there but for those of you who recognize that a leak problem where we have fluid going in and we have a leak well this principle this applies to that problem it does 
Absolutely does. That's right, Jalen. Hey, go for it, Jalen. Yeah, okay. Just think about the distance that we're covering. If we're going in the same direction, we're subtracting. Because again, the same, you know, they're going to cover the same space at certain points. So we cancel that out. And then boom, if we're going opposite directions, we add. So everyone in this situation, what do we do? In this situation, what are we doing? It says two planes, same position, travel in the same direction. What are we doing here? Do you know now? Are we more confident than we were before? Yeah, I got you, Michaela. Yeah, now we're gonna subtract. So perfect. We know that we're supposed to subtract the rates to understand the true rate of them traveling together in terms of their distance apart. So with that said, let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, we can go ahead and just take this and duplicate it, move it right below, and let's go ahead and subtract. Let's go ahead and subtract. So if we subtract, here we go, we have six minus five, that's one, five minus one, that's four, and then 15 minus nine, that's six. So this is your true rate. This is your true rate. You don't have to write the word true. You can just write rate or official rate or whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Cause again, it's your notes, but this is how we find the actual rate that we're gonna be working with. It's 641 kilometers per hour. That's how far apart these two planes are moving. So now we can use that to find the time it takes for them to get that far apart in terms of the 961.5. So what we'll do is we'll set up now the distance equals rate times time, and we figured it out. Our distance, everybody, what's that gonna be? Hit me in the chat box. The distance that we're plugging in is what? Mm, a little quick there, not the 641, but the 961.5, yes. That's the distance that we're trying to cover with those planes, you know, traveling apart here or, you know, getting further apart. The rate now, what is it that we're going to be putting in? <laughs> yeah, the 641 behind my big old head right here. And then that's going to be time. So allow me to go ahead and highlight these pieces here so there's our true rate and then this was our distance which i can go ahead and use a gray highlighter right there perfect and so cool we'll bring it back now and let me get my perfect cool all right so from here the last step that we need to take everybody is what we have 961.5 equals 641t. What are we supposed to do to find out the time? What are we supposed to do? Thank you for saying it properly. Who was that? Janae, thank you for saying properly. We need to divide 641 on both sides. Be specific, talk about it clearly so you can think clearly. So here, we will divide both sides by 641. 641 right there. So once we divide, we'll get the answer. We'll get the time by itself. Now, everyone, just take a look at your answers and ask yourself if you actually have to do all the work. So everyone, quick question. Does 641 go into 961 only one time? Does it go in there only one time? Or is it more than once? So if I do 961 divided by 641, is it gonna be a perfect one or is it gonna be more than one? Is it gonna be a perfect one or more than one? Right, it's gonna be more than one. There's gonna be a remainder, right? Remember, division is how many groups can I make? So 641 goes into 961 at least once. Does it go in there twice though? If I double 641, is that 961? Nah, okay, so what did we just say? We just said, hey, it's more than one, less than two. What's the only answer that's more than one, but less than two? What's the only one? A, one and a half, right? If you take a look at this, 641 goes into 961. If you just think about it in terms of 600 and 900, that looks to be about one and a half. Cause 600 cut in half, 300, added on, that's 900. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a form of mental math that can help you 
in real time during a test. Remember that the, the ASVAB is not about showing off your calculation skills. It's just about getting the right answer. Getting the right answer as quickly as you can and saving headaches. Absolutely. So the correct answer is going to be A, 1.5 hours if we take a look, but I don't want to shortchange anybody. Let's go ahead and show that division and then move promptly to the next question. So here we go. The division, here's what it'll look like. We have 641 goes into 961.5. So here we go. Well, 641 goes into 961. We already said it just one time. doesn't go in there twice. So when we subtract this, what do we get? Well, we get zero there, we get two there, and then three. And then we bring down that five. Okay. Then we have to ask ourselves, well, how many times does 641 go into 3,205? Well, if I'm thinking 600 into 3,000, it's about five, maybe, hopefully. We'll guess. We'll check it out. 641 times five. Notice that you just have to be comfortable with numbers. If you're not comfortable with numbers, again, the math basics is the first place you want to start in the program. So one times five is five, four times five is 20, two, uh, six times five is 30, carry that to 32. So that right there, yes, it's a perfect five. And there's our answer. Excuse me there, let me go and come back to the right screen. Boom. There's the answer, but make sure to remember that our decimal place was right here, so it belongs right there. 1.5, that is the answer. Time equals 1.5 hours. Don't forget, we have a free class once a week, typically on Mondays, 6 p.m. Eastern time. If you'd like to join, go ahead, go to that link over there, or text free class to 833-321-0182. Ace the ASVAB.